Friends, today, an experiment. Let's take, oh, I don't know, a two-door German go-fast car and chop the roof off. Not exactly something you would take to a track, but where shall we drive it? Well, we did something similar in Spain and really enjoyed it, but let's try something new to us, but not too far. Let's say Italy, but we don't want something too touristy. How about the Croatia side of Italy? And with that, let's see what's in store for us under the sun of the Gulf of Trieste. I feel like as of late I've been starting these episodes with we've been here before or I'm feeling a touch of deja vu and this is really no exception. We've driven this engine before. We've driven this in the C63S Coupe. So just as a recap, what is it? Well, it's a four liter twin turbo V8. And when you think Mercedes and four liter twin turbo V8, you probably think AMG GT. And yes, this is a related engine, but it's not exactly the same engine. The biggest difference is in the GT, it's a dry sump lubrication system, a side oiler. Uh, uh, this one is not. So what's going on here as it's related to this application? Well, there is the base C63, which is 469 horsepower, which comes in at a relatively high engine speed of 5,500 RPM, stays flat all the way to 6,250 RPM. And then there's the torque, which we're excited about, which is 479 pound-feet of torque, comes in at a very low 1,750 RPM, stays flat all the way up to 4,500 RPM. Now this one we have here, of course, I picked out the full fat C63S convertible. Uh, so this gives us a bit more power. So on the horsepower, it goes up to 503 horsepower, which also comes in at 5,500 RPM, stays flat all the way up to 6,250 RPM. But the torque, that's really the biggest change for me. That's 516 pound-feet of torque, and that comes in at also 1,750 RPM, stays flat all the way up to 4,500 RPM. Now let's put that aside and notice what's going on here. Well, first thing you notice is this was hand-built by Patrick Vogel. And number two, there's two turbos that are sitting here. Notice where they are. They sit kind of on top of the engine in the V or a hot V as sometimes this is referred to. And really there are a couple reasons why an engineer would put the turbos in the V. The first and foremost is the packaging. I mean, look at the size of the front end of this car and they have shoehorned a V8 in really what was meant for a four and a six cylinder. But there's a second less obvious benefit from the packaging and that's the placement. So notice where the turbochargers are here and notice the distance from the front of the car. Now if I were to take these turbochargers and shoehorn them down here somewhere, the air has to travel farther to get to each turbocharger, where in this case the air has less distance to travel, thus it cools them more efficiently. Now that all sounds great, but how does it work out on the road? First things first, welcome to Slovenia. Uh, not only is this the first time we are ever shooting a car in Slovenia, but it's the first time I personally have ever been here in a stunning place, as you can see. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Now let's press on to the car, shall we? Now, you and I are not unfamiliar with this engine. Uh, our job now is to unpack how this works in the heaviest version of the group, and that is the convertible. Now, if you remember, in the C63S Coupe, there's a whole bunch of different changes that you can make to the throttle mapping. Right now, I'm in the comfort mode, and, okay, we're going downhill, so let's get to the bottom of this hill. By the way, just stunning. Let's put our foot into it around this corner. And yes, there is plenty of pulling power, even in comfort mode, but uh, was that really a shocker? So let's try this now, a little bit tighter. We're gonna get a nice little bridge here, but let's prepare and go into sport mode. Going up this hill, look at this bridge. Oh boy, that's beautiful. Now let's put our foot into it. Oh, lost a little bit back there. So yeah, I would say there's plenty of pulling power, especially on mildly damp Slovenian roads. You really, if I'm honest, you don't notice a huge difference in pulling power even with the heavier car. Okay, now we get into a clearing here. Let's go into the Sport Plus mode, put our foot into it a bit more because we can see where we're going. Plenty of pulling power. Is it as frenetic as the coupe? Maybe not, but I don't know if that's a function of the added weight or the fact that it's an open car. Now let's go to full fat mode, race mode, put our foot into it a bit more. Well, maybe not around this turn. A Little bit of delay. Now, wait for it, here we go. Ho oh, ho! Yes, it's got plenty of power where you get to go sideways. Now that's something we're gonna cover in a bit. 
Uh, that's the stability control mode. So yes, you can have fun even with the electronic bits coming in, but the reality of the situation is that is the higher threshold mode. Basically, when you go into race mode, it switches you uh, from the full stability control to a basically a higher limit of intervention. And yes, you can turn off the stability control system. Oh, that was a pisser. So check, yes, there is plenty of power, even though it's heavier, but we go over a beautiful bridge there. And can I just say, I love driving in Slovenia. Okay, so this is the point of the episode where you need to break out your notebook, your etch a sketch your speak and spell, whatever it is you use, because there are a number of bits that affect the driving dynamics. Let's call them moving parts, because that's what they are. Um, and we need to really complicate things further because we have to put them in two columns. There's the C63 and the C63S. So let's dive in with the brakes. So if this were a C63, uh, the rotors would be 14.2 inches in diameter. But this is not a C63, it's a C63S. So that means it's 15.4 inches in diameter. But to further complicate things, uh, this one is fitted with optional carbon ceramic rotors. So uh, the front is 15.8. Let's put aside the brakes and let's move on to all of like the adjustments. So you and I have driven many a Mercedes, the GLC all the way up to like the S65 Coupe. And in every one of those, there's like a dynamic ride control. So you can adjust everything from the throttle mapping, the steering mapping to the dampers uh, from a comfort all the way up to a Sport Plus or in this case, a race. Um, but in this case, and we found this out in the C63 Coupe episode, there is a separate ride control function, which is just the dampers. So you can separate the dampers, basically how you map the dampers from the mapping of the engine, the transmission, and the steering. So for example, you could have this in race mode and this in comfort mode. Not that you would, but you could. So let's put all of that aside. And now let's focus on really what makes this different. Again, in the C63S Coupe episode, that we learned was more than just a C63 or just a C sedan with just two doors lopped off of it. There were a number of engineering changes, but the biggest thing that contributed to the driving dynamics of that car was the change in the width. So for example, it was about two inches wider here, but about two and a half wider in the rear. Now the convertible is more based on the Coupe than it is the sedan. And there were some other changes and you really need to check out that episode because we saw all the bits here, like the suspension bits. There was a whole new rear suspension and different knuckles up front, all that kind of stuff we saw naked in that episode. So make sure you check that out. But now we need to get to that dirty six letter word, the weight. So uh, no one was pretending that AMGs are light cars in the past. However, in any case where you chop the roof off of a car, you're always going to increase weight. And that's not just the top itself, but it's the top plus all the structure bits to make it still a somewhat strong vehicle. Well, if you're looking from a coupe to this, it's about 275 pounds difference. But from the sedan to this, it's about 450 pounds difference. And some of the biggest components that lead to that is the top is about 110 pounds more. And then all of the structure that goes into it is about 165 pounds more. Okay, now that we've covered that dissertation on driving dynamics, let's see how this all works on the roads of Slovenia, or is it Italy? I forgot which border we crossed yet. Anyway, let's just find out how it works. And here's where we get to the challenging part of the episode, trying to bring three things together that aren't really known as the best of friends. And number one, reduce structural rigidity. Number two, a lot of horsepower. And number three, a significant increase in weight. So with that, a little inside baseball here. As I crossed over from Italy into Slovenia, I deliberately looked for some very less than perfect roads here to unpack whether three competing theories could coexist harmoniously under one roof or under one folded roof. But you get what I mean. Now for that answer, we need to backtrack a bit to the coupe version of this car. Back in October, we spoke with both the Mercedes engineers as well as the Alfatabach engineers, and they went on and on and on about the two extra inches of width in the front of the coupe and two and a half extra inches of width in the rear of the coupe. 
but then they became suspiciously quiet after that conversation. But I would argue they were quiet because the width was not so much for the coupe, it was more for this car because they knew this one was going to be a bit of a porker. So if you notice, you go around a curve in this thing, especially a hard curve, you do not get a lot of lean. And most importantly, you don't get a lot of squat in the outside rear wheel. Something you wouldn't expect in a car that's carrying almost an extra 500 pounds of weight. Now with that, this is both a Mercedes and an AMG, which is to say the suspension has enough technology to make the entirety of Silicon Valley blush. So as we cascade through the damper settings, that's when you notice the structure difference. Like for example, this comfort mode. And if I'm honest, this is an AMG first, a Mercedes-Benz second, which means this thing shouldn't be called comfort mode, it should be called compliant mode. And frankly, that's why you buy an AMG. Anyway. I digress. Which gets us to a point of a spectrum with at one end the strength of say a block of steel and on the other end all the structural rigidity of a paper bag. So in that context this two-door high-power AMG convertible displays all the structural characteristics of a block of aluminum. But that's until you get up to the Sport Plus and the race modes. Remember both the mechanical and the e-diff we talked about? Well once again it's this car that I'm starting to see why the engineers put it in both the coupe and the convertible. And it's at this point that those disparate theories start to converge. Take for example that C63S coupe that we drove. Pretty much anybody could push that thing hard through a curve and be able to look like a rock star. And that's a big function of that electronic diff. It's not a brake actuated torque vectoring system like you see in most cars. It's this multi-clutch system that's actually in the differential sending torque to the wheel that needs it. But in this case, remember you've got that extra weight, less structure. So what's happening here is it'll do a lot of what the coupe does. Not 100%, maybe about 90% of what the coupe does. Now let's stand back from all this stuff because when I stepped off the plane here, I didn't expect any of this. This is kind of an old school feeling car in a way in that it's demanding more driver involvement from you and I dare I say better driver skills because you gotta be a better driver to know what to do with that extra weight and all this power in this one contained package. Which I gotta say is kind of refreshing to have this autonomy left back to you, the person, and not the engineers. So for quite some time, I had this lovely vision of visiting the Adriatic, sitting on the Gulf of Trieste, looking at beautiful cars and even more beautiful women under the glorious sun. Sadly, that is not meant to be. But there is good news. This is an opportunity to check out the roof. And this is a more involved affair than my Elise, uh, which basically has a towel and two plastic rods that hold it into place. Uh, this believe it or not, is a weight saving measure. So I already told you this is about 450 pounds more than the sedan, about 2,250 more than the coupe. So the idea in Stuttgart with the engineers was to do some weight saving high in the car. And they did that by looking at load bearing and non load bearing bits in the roof. So here, for example, where the roof meets the car, this is steel, heavier. But then a non load bearing area, the leading edge here, this is magnesium. And then the top bows in here, not the ones back here, these are aluminum. Now notice you can't even see the structure here, and that's a function of the actual top itself. So you got the canvas, yeah, then there's the insulation, and then there's the headliner underneath it. Okay, so we've got that, and I know it's still raining somewhat here. Folks in Stuttgart aren't gonna love this, but I still wanna demonstrate something to you guys here. So let's try this. So the top goes down, and one of the challenges, and I spoke to one of the aerodynamicists, if that's the actual title, uh, any convertible, no matter what it is, when you put someone in the back, exactly where this is shoots the air right into the rear passenger's face. So a couple of years ago, they invented this thing here. that comes up there and there, and the idea is to root the air over the rear passengers um, so they don't get blown in the face, but this is a newer version where this sits a bit higher. Notice it's more integrated from a, an aesthetic point of view, and this one also sits just a bit higher as well. So hopefully we can test this out with the top down. Uh, but until then, I think we got a bit of a rain delay here. Have I shown you the power station over there? That's been rotating. We can look at that while it's raining.
Okay, so as we get back to the city center of Trieste here, the rain has somewhat subsided, but it still looks somewhat ominous out there. So let's focus on some of the interior details. Um, number one, this is an AMG. So that's to say, IWC clock. People, this is what you need in every car. Uh, and then number two, uh, the roof. So we already talked about the way the layers of all this kind of thing. Uh, basically, the interior, it is definitely noisier than that Dawn, no doubt about that. It actually makes you realize how quiet that Dawn was. And also the finish here, you got this like plastic headliner kind of thing here. And can I just say how cool this is? I mean, we're driving around the old city here with scooters and everything. But look at this. We're like AMG's latest in the old world of the Croatia side of Italy. How cool is that? Anyway, the headliner, not quite the same finish as that Rolls Royce Dawn, but then again, this is what? a quarter of the price and a bargain at that. Uh, so long and short of the story, uh, this is, while a nice finish, not quite the detail that I've seen in other cars. And we'll spend some more time talking about this in the S-Class convertible, which is gonna be coming up probably towards the end of June or July. Uh, and with that, everything else is kinda, well, the Mercedes-Benz C63 Coupe we saw before. Uh, they do have this edition one that is, it's this satin white finish on the outside and satin carbon fiber. Not a big carbon fiber fan, but I got to tell you, this thing is kind of cool. And I, I would love to see the wood. I guess that would be second choice for me. And with that, we're back to the water and main piazza of what has proven to be, well, not so sunny, Trieste or Trieste Italia. So in summary, what do we got? Well, two things. Number one, uh, let's just say a coming storm. And number two, to be honest, I've always been a convertible freak, but even I have to admit, these are imperfect vehicles. And that's really a function of two things. Number one, the minute you lop the roof off of any vehicle, you compromise its structural integrity. And number two, the packaging constraints are really challenges of where do you put the folding roof or in the case of like those origami hardtops, it gets even worse back there. But then when you add this much power, that's when you exacerbate any, let's just say, shortcomings that were in said vehicle. So really, on paper, this, it shouldn't really work. But after spending some time on the lovely Slovenian and Italian countryside roads, it actually does, and does so really well. But it's a function of some of the changes that were made in the coupe, the width, some of the driving dynamics changes from the folks at AMG with the way they changed the suspension on these things. But in reality, it all works together. I guess the best way to put it, it's more than the sum of its parts. So with that, I wanna turn this around to you guys because we're starting to see more of these. Like for example, the Corvette Z06, that is a track car that frankly, when you cut the roof off of it, you can't take it on a track much like you couldn't take this on a track, well, no governing body would let you because you'd have to make major changes to do it. And I don't think anybody that would spend the money on this would actually do that. So my question to you is this, what would you do with this? What is this a tool for? Is it a function of just going down the beautiful roads on the Adriatic here? Or do you just wanna have the bragging rights of the most powerful convertible? And I'm looking for your input on this. Or if this actually is more power, would you rather have the C300 or the C43? And you know what, for good measure, is this just something you wouldn't have because you would take this, the coupe version of this on a track? And don't just tell me yes or no, but give me the why or why not. And for good measure, let me know what region of the world you live in. Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV, all one word, Moto Man TV, all one word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I wanna leave you with two things. Uh, number one, make sure you download our fancy new mobile application, which you can download for free at Apple iTunes and Google Play. And number two, a fun fact. So we already talked about how you can operate the roof up to 30 miles an hour in this vehicle. Um, but really, when you're going 30 miles an hour with a big roof going up like that, it's not a roof, it's a sail. So what did the engineers in Stuttgart have to like dial in in terms of pressure to the hydraulic system to get that thing to go up at 30 miles an hour? The answer, one ton. From Slovenia, until I see you next time, bis später.